Hello, in this video we're in the simple linear regression setting, but we're going to assume that we have a fixed zero intercept model. And what that means is we're going to let y equal this line that's forced through the origin, zero, zero, around some error. And here we're going to assume with the normal assumptions. Now, one note is um, some say, why well, force it through the intercept, you know, and then study that. Well, the reason is if we pick, if we have a model with an arbitrary fixed intercept, so that is y is equal to this line plus some error where beta zero is known, so that's a fixed intercept. If we subtract that to the other side, because it's just a constant, and then relabel this yi star, then we're back in the zero intercept model. And so it's okay to just study the zero intercept model. Now, I personally have never used the zero intercept model, but I know other fields and disciplines have. And, and it often is that you assume that your data follows some model that's nonlinear, and then when you transform it to a linear setting, that somehow you end up getting a fixed intercept, a known fixed intercept. But, and then so you can take subtract that over and then get put your model in the zero intercept model. And so this is not going to be an exhaustive video on the zero intercept model, but look at some of the properties and then just open your ideas to explore more if you need to. So the least squares estimate for beta 1 is this. So we're going to let Q be the sum of these air terms squared, right? Least squares, which is this, so we're going to try to minimize this, where the air term in the zero intercept model is you subtract the beta over. Now we take the partial of Q with respect to beta 1, the 2 comes out front, subtract 1, then the, the chain rule says take the derivative with respect to beta 1, and we get this. We set it equal to 0, and uh, first of all, we multiply everything by minus 1 to get rid of that. We divide everything by 2 to get rid of that. And then multiply that in. Multiply it in. Now, we subtract this to the other side, divide by the sum of the xi squares. And this is the least squares estimate for beta 1. Now, one note here, though, is if we look at this here, okay, so that's yi, which is this, that when we plug in beta 1 hat becomes a fitted model and it's times x and we and we pick the least squares estimate to force that to be zero okay and we're going to use this later in the video and you're going to wonder where it comes from and that and it's this um, the properties of beta 1 hat the expected value is is this so everything's a constant but the y so it goes into it expected value of y is the regression line so it's x beta 1 and so or xi beta 1 and so the beta 1's constant can come out front and that x and the x in here becomes x squared and those cancel leaving beta 1 so it is an unbiased estimate the variance of beta 1 hat so this constant comes out squared and then when we go into here, we got to take the xi squared times variance. And these are iid, so there's no covariance. And the variance of this is sigma squared, so it comes out front. And then the sum of the xi cancels with one of those, and we're left with this. So, clearly, beta 1 hat is a linear combination of the y's. So it's normally distributed. has a mean beta 1 and a variance sigma squared over the sum of the xi squared. Um, in, in this zero intercept model, we're going to show that our unbiased estimate for the error variance is this. Now here's a note. In the simple linear regression setting, we it's n minus 2. And the minus 2 has to, to a uh, general rule is however many parameters you need to estimate. And we're only estimating one. And that's why we subtract one. In the simple linear regression setting, we have to estimate two, beta zero and beta one, so we subtract two. So here, let's look, let's just do the top, since that's a constant. Let's take the respective value of this, 
Um, y, of course, is this line. The fitted value is y or beta 1 hat xi, and it, of course it's squared. Now, we're going to group the beta 1s. So we, we, we put these two together. So it's beta 1 times xi minus Yeah, so the xi's are constant. I mean, they're, they're the, the same, so we factor out the xi. And then when we square it, we keep that term here. And this is by itself. And then so then we take that times this, and then that times that, and we get this. So that was a little awkward in, in describing that, but I think that if you go through the math, you'll, you'll get that. So now when we take the, plus we took the expected value inside the sum, so here, this is squared. So this is the same as the variance of this plus the mean quantity squared of this. And the x comes out because it's uh, constant. Uh, the expected value of xi squared is the same as the variance of xi plus the mean squared. And this right here, we, um, we take this times that and this times that. And then, we do, and then we take the expected value in. So that's where we get the expected value of that epsilon i, and the second part is this, 2xi expected value beta 1 hat epsilon i. Now, here the variance is this, the, the, it's an unbiased estimate, so this is zero. The variance of epsilon i is sigma squared, that's zero. This is zero, expected value of epsilon i is zero. And this, we're not going through the de derivation, but it's actually quite straightforward is this. Now, um, when we take the sum in, we get the sum of this divided by the sum of that, we're just left with sigma squared. Sum of this there's, makes n of them. Um, this, I don't know why the zero's there. Oh, from before, so that's zero. And then when we bring in the sum, we get the sum of xi squared, and those cancel and we're left with two sigma squared. Factor out of sigma squared, we get sigma squared over n. So that implies that the expected value of this, what we just calculated, divided by n, is sigma squared. Now to partition the sum of squares, which we use in the ANOVA table, and I must say specifically for the zero intercept model, we want to show that this relationship holds, which this is what we call the sum of squares total in the zero intercept model. This sum of squares regression, sum of squares residual. And that makes sense, right? The data minus the fitted line, you know, how it fluctuates around it. So we have the sum of squares, uh, sum of yi squares. We add zero, so it doesn't change it. But then we keep this and we group that. So when we square it, we get that squared this term squared, and then that times this, this times that, so there's two of them, right? And we get this. Now, this is sum of squares regression. This is, right, sum of squares residual. And this right here, remember the fitted line is uh, beta one xi. So the beta one is, beta one hat, I mean, is constant, there's no index, so it can be brought out front. So that's where the beta one and the xi come from. But this, on page one, we said was zero. So that implies that this relationship does hold. Well, that's all I have for this video in the zero intercept model. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that, I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.